Okay, in this video I'm going to be talking about the manual uh, valve body internal trans brake for a Turbo 400. Uh, pretty much what the manual valve does, the operations, and how it passes fluid through here, and what it uh, generally does uh, inside the transmission with the uh, clutches and the uh, gear set. So we'll start off here. This is main line. So this is where your, your pump fluid is coming from, your main pump pressure here. Um, post regulated, it's coming right to here. Where the manual valve is currently, this is in park. Mainline fluid is coming here, but it's being stopped from going this way or this way in the valve body. So that is your park. Uh, so fluid cannot go anywhere. When we go to go into reverse, we'll move the manual valve to the approximate location. Okay, now you can see we're in reverse. So now, what we're doing is we're taking mainline pressure and we're coming down to the manual valve. Well now, the way the manual valve is uh, designed, it will not let fluid go this way, but it will let fluid now go into th this cavity here, so this way. So the fluid's coming up and it's going into this cavity here. This being an internal um, trans brake, the fluid is sitting in this cavity under pressure, but it's being stopped by the solenoid, the trans brake solenoid. Now, in reverse, with these valve bodies, you need to uh, activate the solenoid to allow the vehicle to go in reverse. Even though it, the manual valve is selected to be in reverse, you need to send fluid to that circuit. So what it's doing now, it, it's kind of very similar to um, all, uh, the in, being in forward gear for the trans brake. It actually is doing the same exact thing. So. When you apply the trans brake solenoid, it is now allowing pressure to flow from this cavity to here, which is going to travel that fluid this way. It goes two places, one to the rear, rear band, reverse band here. The other place it goes to is into this cavity here, okay, and into these cavities here. Now, typically you'll find a white or a green 3 8 uh, check ball. When the fluid is coming this way, it's forcing the check ball into this machine surface here, sealing off this cavity from allowing any pressure or fluid to go back to the manual valve. Uh, so it's kind of just a, a dual wave kind of check ball valve here. So you're applying uh, the band and you are moving. It does apply pressure here, okay? Uh, it is now uh, also applying pressure dual feeding your direct drum. So what this does is these are the tool, uh, excuse me, two ports that are left and right of your center bolt that center bolt for the center support that holds the center support in place that has a hole in the center of it. Uh, so the fluid is going between those two. When you hear the term dual feed center support, you're removing that second uh, seal on the center support uh, that uh, the direct drum rides on. Uh, in doing so, you're now able to dual feed your direct drum. And typically the modification on the direct drum is you're taking the smaller piston seal out of the direct drum because you want it to apply as fast as possible. Uh, typically they do that OEM fashion is to allow the smaller piston to come on first and then the larger piston shortly after to give a smooth uh, application of those clutches. All right, so that's our reverse circuit uh, and primarily holding that band up is uh, what allows us to go into reverse technically. All right, yes, we are applying direct drum clutches and what that does is locks up the uh, direct drum uh, where it meets up with the forward drum. So now let's go to first, excuse me, neutral. Neutral is pretty much the same thing as reverse. It doesn't really, it's no different. It does not allow fluid to come this way into the forward uh, section. Uh, it still allows fluid to go into the reverse circuit, so uh, technically with this valve body you could still have reverse in neutral. Uh, only because it's going to be applying fluid still to the reverse circuit. You, you can hit the trans brake solenoid uh, on this internal trans brake valve body and you can actually still obtain reverse uh, in neutral uh, because it is no different. If, you, if you're in reverse, right, if you're typically in reverse on this valve body, which is here, okay, there is still no pressure flowing to this reverse circuit so nothing is being applied, so you can still technically, it would be the same as neutral. So it is no different. 
And the reason that is is because since we're out of park, the parking paw is no longer locking the uh, uh, rear uh, ring gear from spinning. So neutral and reverse are the same exact thing on this circuit. You can do achieve both things. You can have neutral and you can have a reverse if you're in reverse or neutral on the manual valve. So now let's go to... There's our neutral, and now let's go to first gear. This being a standard pattern, one, two, three, or drive, two, three. We are now in first gear. We're taking mainline pressure to the manual valve. Now it's able to cross this way into the forward section. So here, our fluid's gonna come out of this side of the manual valve. It's gonna fill this cavity and go right to the forward drum. So it is now feeding the forward drum. So it goes from here through the case, into the pump, through the pump, through the uh, input shaft or around the input shaft and into the forward drum, giving you first gear or forward. That's a constant thing, no matter what. That once it's in drive, that's on, okay? Also, it is still allowing fluid to start to pass into the reverse circuit. And that's how you get your uh, your vehicle to stage with the trans brake on while being in first gear or drive okay so you're still having pressure here your manual valve is in drive however it will allow fluid to now uh, what it's doing is it's taking fluid you're in drive now it's also sending fluid right here to this cavity waiting for your trans brake solenoid to be activated once it is activated it's still being in forward gear, it's applying fluid to the reverse circuit. So there's no mechanical mechanism that holds your car in place on the trans brake, it is all hydraulically done. Okay, so that circuit is now being repeated again just like it would be in reverse, however you're in drive. So the two oppose each other, allowing you to be hydraulically locked into one position. Uh, and then when you go to bump your car in the beams, it pulses this solenoid, allowing uh, fluid to be halted and uh, applied back on uh, very momentarily to allow the car to roll forward uh, in a more of an aggressive fashion uh, to bump into the beams. So that happens with this solenoid, okay? Once you release the trans brake, uh, it halts this circuit, the reverse circuit, and now it is in drive. Okay, this being a manual um, valve body, we have to manually shift it. So now we're going to go into second gear. Now second gear has completely blocked off the reverse circuit. This valve body not being a uh, ha not having the ability to start off in second gear and still utilize the uh, transbrake. So this is not one of those valve bodies. So. We're in second gear. We got mainline pressure coming into the manual valve. Now it's jumping over. Now again, we're still feeding our forward drum. That's not going to change. Now we're able to jump over from this little kind of slit into the manual valve, and I'll slide it back right here, okay? From that little slit in the manual valve is now allowing fluid. That's why this is designed this way. Is now allowing fluid to flow this way to the forward drum, this way over the manual valve into that slit of the manual valve and then out of this cavity here, sending a fluid all the way here. So this is considered second gear to the center support, okay? When you're in first gear, the forward drum is spinning with the engine, okay? That's always gonna spin in that direction. And what's happening is the uh, direct drum is spinning counter to the forward drum. So they're both spinning in opposite directions at the same speed, okay? That's your first gear. When you shift into second, what's happening is the forward drum is still spinning, but now we're applying pressure to the center support, the center bolt, applying the intermediate clutches. What that does is violently stops your direct drum, okay? So it's just sitting there in second gear, not moving, okay? That's how you get second gear, okay? We're 
where as soon as we shift a second, immediately that direct drum immediately stops. And that's why they pretty much can explode under a heavy duty amount of power as well as going to third gear, which I'll explain. Okay, so we're in second gear, fluid's still going to forward, fluid's jumping over the manual valve, going into this cavity, feeding the uh, center hole in the center support, getting the intermediate clutches to activate, giving us second gear, and completely violently stopping the direct drum. So now let's go into third final gear here. So again, our flow is limited. Now, this is where the manual gear is, is directly where it is on my particular transmission. And you can you can kind of play with this too. What I don't like is in, in third gear, we have a little bit of overlap. Might be hard to see, but uh, you can see it right there. The block off portion of the manual valve to prevent flow from going into the reverse circuit is overhanging a, probably close to a third, pretty considerable. Maybe nothing to really bitch about on this, but uh, enough to probably make me concerned because in all honesty, uh, it doesn't need, that doesn't need to be there. It's not gonna affect anything else down, downstream. So, now we're sending mainline fluid into the manual valve over to here. We're still feeding our forward drum. We are still jumping over. Uh, we're still feeding our center support. Okay, so our intermediates are activated. But once that happens, now we're sending fluid over here into this cavity, jumping back over through that slit groove that we use to activate second gear. And it's going into the check ball cavity here. It is now applying pressure, pushing that check ball over to this side, preventing any uh, fluid bypass. And then now activating uh, or sending fluid, dual feeding your center support to your direct drum. What that does is immediately activates the direct drum, causing it to now move in the same direction as the forward drum. So first gear, the direct drum is counter-rotating. Second gear, it completely stops. Third gear, it moves in the same uh, rotation as the forward drum. So that's what gives us third gear, okay? So it kind of gives you a pretty good idea of how this all works, what it does, and why it does what it does. A little silly on this end, I mean, this is a very basic white label trans brake uh, valve body. Again, very simple, very basic. So hopefully that helps you understand how this works and what it does. Uh, it's not too specific, and I want to get too specific, uh, but generally how it works and where the fluid is going and what it's doing. Um, it is pretty simple. Why it does the way it does, I, I don't know. I, I know that the in first gear, counter-rotating the direct drum, because the direct drum, the the forward drum is uh, has its forward drum hub. And if you're familiar with those, kind of when you're upgrading your 400, you're going from a cast steel uh, forward uh, drum hub to a more of a billet steel. That hub is connected to your intermediate shaft, which runs all the way back uh, to the rear ring gear. Okay, so that intermediate shaft, actually I'll get one for you, making this video a little easier to understand. Okay, so this is the front of your transmission, and this is the rear of the transmission. Just take my word for it, that goes on there. That's the uh, sun gear. What's happening is this is locked into your rear ring gear, okay? And right on the back side of that is your output shaft. This part here is on the forward uh, uh, drum uh, hub. So like I said, you're gonna change that to a billet one uh, because they can crack. So what's happening is this end here, okay? This end here is going splined into your direct drum. So as the forward hub is spinning clockwise in, in forward, in first gear, 
Okay, this is spinning counterclockwise. And what that does is it spins your sun gear and your reaction carrier, reaction gears, and your uh, rear planetary gears. This is how you get your first, second, and third. Okay, so this is spinning this way, this is spinning this way in first gear. They're counter to each other. When second gear happens, okay, this one comes to a dead stop. And when third gear happens, they go this way. So first gear being on all the way in the back end, okay, as it's spinning, is spinning the first set for the last section of your gears and then everything else kind of stacks up as it's going through the gears. So the sun gear is technically stopping. And this all happens too as well because your uh, reverse band is on your reaction uh, uh, carrier, which again gives you reverse and helps that all happens down this way. Uh, so again, in second gear, this, this shaft comes to a dead stop. Uh, but this one here is always going to be spinning at whatever the input RPM is of the transmission. Because this is um, technically, well, technically when it's in forward gear, I should say. Because the clutches, the clutches have to be applied, your forward clutches have to be applied uh, for to connect the forward drum to your forward drum to your clutches to your forward drum hub which then connects to here. And again, this is connected directly to the rear ring gear, uh, which is directly on, pretty much directly onto your output shaft. Um, there is some, obviously, uh, planetary gears in that sense to give you the low range that you need as first gear, but for all intents and purposes, it's directly connected. Uh, so this is always gonna be spinning at the input of the whatever the input of the forward drum is, uh, and then this here obviously changes because of the direct drum. Okay, and again, that's why it explodes or cracks or fails horribly, is because it so much power is being driven as it's being counter rotated in first gear. Well, when it goes to second, it has to completely stop, and then in third gear, as this is still spinning in that direct, in the it's always um, static direction. Uh, and this being dynamic, it's then going to then, third gear is going to activate both, and they're both going to spin at the same time. Okay? So hopefully that helped you understand a little bit about it, and a little bit about uh, what this manual valve body does, and, and in, in all reality, uh, should help you understand a basic 400. Uh, but with the OEM ones, there's a whole lot more going on, and you have your engine braking band, which is over here, which is not being used. Um, uh, the accumulator for that uh, and then everything else there's a bunch of stuff up here uh, your modulator circuit would be here as well for an OEM uh, and again on an external trans brake valve body the modular circuit uh, is being reused on the external for um, uh, the trans brake so that would be your external utilizing the OEM modulator circuit uh, that's pretty much the same it's just a little it, it literally just comes from here and goes straight over uh, so, uh, very interesting how that works, too. But hopefully that helps. Uh, any comments, questions, drop them in, in the section there. And then if I said something wrong or fucked up on something, please let me know. Uh, but then again, it's just a little, hopefully, explanation of how the manual valve works and what it should do internally in the transmission on the drums and the cure set. So, thanks for watching.